In this video, we will aim to find the best chat GPT extension for VS Code in 2023. Now, chat GPT seems to be the talk of the town at the moment. Now, the reason for this is that chat GPT is a new type of AI that can create conversational text to answer anything from simple questions to elaborate essays. Mamma mia! Now, obviously, developers being developers, it didn't take long for people to see how chat GPT could be used to speed up development. And after a few days of chat GPT being released, the first visual code extension that makes use of chat GPT was released. Now, as of recording, there are currently about 25 extensions that make use of chat GPT for VS Code. Now, out of this list, about four or five of them seem to have caught the developer's world's imagination. Now, the extensions that I'm going to mention in this video have all been installed well over 5,000 times a piece. So, in today's video, we will answer the question, what do these extensions actually do? Will they speed up your workflow? And more importantly, which is the best one? Now, this first extension is one of the most downloaded extensions in today's review. The extension has the original name of ChatGPT, and it was created by a developer called Ali Ginse. Now, as of recording, this extension has been downloaded over 28,000 times, which is pretty amazing. Now, what this extension does really well is to provide you with an easy way to ask GPT API any questions that you might have. Now, in order to get going and installing this extension locally, what we're going to do is fire open Visual Studio, go to the Marketplace extension, search for Chat GPT, and it'll be this nice little pink one at the top here. Now, what will happen is that after installing this plugin, you're going to get access to basically something in your left hand sidebar here, like this. Clicking on it is then going to open up this chat. Now, when you ask your first question, you'll be prompted to enter in an SDK key. Now, the nice thing about this extension is it'll also provide you with a link that when you click on, it will take you to the API generation page on ChatGPT. Now, all you need to do is click on this link, sign in, generate a key, copy it, and then paste it into Visual Studio Code. After successfully adding the key, you're then free to ask ChatGPT any question that you like. So that pretty much covers everything that this extension does. So the things that I like about the extension are that it's free, easy to install and authenticate. Now, the things I don't like is it doesn't really provide you with any development specific features. All it basically gives you is a nice chat window. Now, I've got a funny story about the most insightful comment that ChatGPT made. And this was to smash on the subscribe button right now and click on that like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Now, if this is the first time you come across this channel, then my name is John and I release a video each Sunday that will help you create enterprise grade websites and make you an absolute coding legend. So if that floats your boat, don't forget to do it now. So let's get back to the content. The second extension that we're going to view today is also called ChatGPT. However, this extension was created by someone called Kieran Shah. And the reason why I like this extension is that it actually has some developer focused capabilities. Now, in order to install it, again, go to your Marketplace Explorer, do a search for ChatGPT, and this one is by Kieran Sa. Now, this has been downloaded over 20,000 times. The nice thing about ChatGPT with Kieran Saha, again, is it's very easy to authenticate with it. All we need to do, as you can see from the documentation, is go to the betaopenapi.com, go in here, generate an extension key, as you can see here, and off we go to the races. After successfully authenticating this extension, you're going to have access to a few handy new features. So let's see these in action. I'm going to highlight this code, right click, and then within the context menu, you can see chat GPT asked to explain code. 
Clicking on this is then going to open up the window on the left hand side. And what ChatGPT will do after a few minutes is actually explain to us what the code is doing. This extension also has another context menu option. So let's highlight this code this time, right click. And now we can do ask why the code isn't working. Now, aside from these two context menu shortcuts, if we go to the command palette, type in a chat to GPT, you can see that we can ask a question, ask to explain code, ask why code isn't working or change the open API key. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the extension. It was very easy to install and get going and also has some great developer specific functionality. So it's definitely worth checking out. The next extension is called Chat GPT for VS Code plugin. Now created by Jay Barnes, this is probably the most popular download with over 35,000 installs so far. Now this extension not only has a handy chat GPT window, it also has some context menu goodness as well. Now, before you can actually start using the app, you do need to authenticate things. And unfortunately, this is where things get a little tricky. As this new way of authenticating is such a faff, I recommend that you first looking at the documentation. And halfway through the project readme, you're going to find some instructions on how to generate some API keys. In order to generate these tokens, you need to go to chat.openai.com slash chat. When we're in here on Chrome, what we can do is inspect, open up our dev tools. From here, we can then go to application and within application cookies, we need to get the value for CF underscore clearance, as well as the value for underscore secure dash next dash auth dot session dash token. Now, we don't just need these two values. We also need the user agent. So this means we also need to go to network. We need to refresh our network tab. We need to click on any of these requests. Then all we need to do is scroll down the bottom where we have this user agent, right click on it and then do copy value. Now that we have these three authentication values, we can now add them into the extension. Now, in order to do this, we can go to our command palette. From here, we can do chat GPT reset token. From here, you're going to be prompted to add in these three keys. So now it's a case of copying those values and painfully adding them into VS Code one at a time. Now, after doing this, hopefully you should then be authenticated and you can use the extension. Why did you copy everything correctly? Now, my main issue with this authentication process is that CF token pretty much expires every two hours. This means that while you're using the extension, it's going to randomly break at certain times. And the only way to fix it is to go through the whole inconvenience of generating a new token, copying and pasting it. And I'm really not sure why it's the most popular downloaded extension, seeing that it's such a hassle. But hey, that's life. Now, after you've got the extension working, the first capability that you're probably going to notice is the chat window. So if you look in the left sidebar here, you can see we've got this broken icon. And then clicking on this icon, you can see we've got this pretty badly styled chat window here. So from here, we can ask any question, just like the ones we've previously seen. Now, aside from this functionality, we also have a few hidden tricks from the context menu. So far up any bit of code, right click on it, and you can see we have the option of chat GPT, why is it broken? Chat GPT, explain code, chat GPT refactor, and chat GPT add tests. Now, we can also access these via the command palette. From here, you can see that we have the ability to add tests, explain code, focus on GPT view, query, refactor, and find out why a code is broken. So lots of options. So to sum up, even though this extension has some really good development related chat GPT features, because the authentication is such a pain, for me, it's unusable, and I give it a massive thumbs down. Code GPT. Now this is another really nice extension that actually has some useful development capabilities. So in order to install it, you get the gist by now, go over to extension marketplace, search for code GPT. Now, surprisingly, I would say with code GPT is it's only been downloaded 25,000 times, but it's not the most popular one. Now, the nice thing about this is once we've installed the plugin, 
what we can do is then go over to any of our code, right click, and then as you can see in the context menu, we've got ask code GPT, explain stuff, refactor things, document it, find problems, even create a unit test. So let's see this in action, create unit test. Now as you can see down the bottom, it's thinking, and we've now got this nice little unit test. Now instead, I wanna actually document things, so I want to get this method, click on it, voila. So I'm not too sure if I'd accept this auto-generated documentation if someone sent it to me as a PR request. However, if you're having some writer's block or you're struggling for some inspiration for how to label your things, this might help you move forward. Moving the recommendation aside, that's not all Code GPT has to offer. It still has a few other tricks up its sleeves. Now, another really handy benefit from using this is that let's say I'm writing a comment. So a function that returns one million, whatever, like this. If I do command shift and I, boom, what will happen is just based on my comments, it's gonna go off and then we're going to get this function here that we can add in. Chat GPT extension for VS Code by Tim Kemmel. Now, this extension has been downloaded the least compared to all the options we've covered in the video so far, with only 15,000 downloads. I mean, 15,000 is still quite a lot. So this extension definitely has some really good capabilities. Straight off, you can see on the left-hand side here, Yep, you've guessed it. We've got a classic chat window so we can ask chat GPT things. Now, if we open up some code, we can right click on some code. And as you probably guessed, we've got some context goodness. So we can ask chat GPT, explain selection, refactor selection, find problems, optimize selection, and even generate some documentation. Now, the gotcha with this extension is when it comes to authentication again. Yep, sadly, if we go to preferences here, settings, go to extensions and look for chat GP, you can see that we're gonna bump into the session token, the clearance token, and the user agent. So sadly, because this uses the same god awful authentication process, for me, I just can't use it, sadly. Now, there is a warning that I should make about ChatGPT, and that is I don't think it's ready for production use yet. Now, currently, it's having scaling issues. Now, as I'm recording this, the connection I'm making to GPT constantly is getting timeouts and errors. And this is the same for every single one of the extensions. So even after establishing a connection, asking questions via VS Code can take minutes to respond. So depending on the context of what you're trying to do, often you're better off still going to Stack Overflow and asking those questions. So that wraps up the most popular chat GPT extensions in 2023. And I think you'll agree there's some pretty cool features there. Now, personally, I think the winner from today's list has got to be Code GTP. So code GTP not only makes use of the API token to authenticate, which means the extension is very stable, it also gives you lots of options in the context menu, like auto-generating documentation and unit tests. And don't forget, it also has that sweet comment code shortcut key capability. So I definitely give code GTP my John D. Jones thumbs up. Now, if all you're looking for is a simple chat GPT window within Visual Studio Code, pick chat GPT by Ali Ginse. However, be aware you could get exactly the same capabilities within your browser by just going over to the website. Anyway, what do you think? Are you finding value from chat GPT? Let me know from the comments below. Now we have got to the time of the video where I always say, if you haven't already, do not forget to smash on the subscribe button. And if you have found value from this video, it does take me a lot of time to test and record all this stuff. Help me out by clicking like because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now, before we leave, if you'd like to learn more about some AI powered Visual Studio Code extensions that can help you write code, then luckily for you, I've recorded a video all about it. So if you want to learn more and get to that video, it should be appearing on screen right now. Simply click on that. 
Otherwise, I hope you've got some value from this video. Hope you're having an amazing time wherever you are in the world right now. And until next Sunday, happy coding.